Thanks everyone for uh, joining us this morning with Coach Sean Kovich. Uh, use the raise hand feature to ask questions. And uh, Coach, why don't you start off this uh, conference by, uh, this is the second time that the Mountaineer Invitational has moved to uh, a spring event. The other time was due to COVID, but why don't you kind of update everyone on uh, what the thinking was there and, and, and what you expect out of it this spring. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Uh, first of all, we're uh, grateful and lucky to have Pete Dye uh, golf club uh, host this event. Uh, they've really embraced it since we started the program. They've embraced us uh, since we've started the program. 2015-16, I believe, was our first year. And like I said, we always had this event in October um, just because of the fall foliage and um, it felt like that was a beautiful time of year. Uh, but the problem with October is that it gets dark pretty early, you know, around 6.30, 6.45. Uh, like you said, one year we had to move it to April because of COVID issues and actually found that we had way more daylight. The weather was just as good. The golf course is, you know, starting to, to show out in early spring. So we thought uh, we would move it to April um, for those reasons. Plus our, our schedule, to be honest with you, it, it fit my schedule better. Uh, we didn't have a lot of uh, events in April. So, um, yeah, I, I love ending the regular season at home because it keeps the guys engaged and, and working hard because they know they're going to play at home. Everybody is going to play either in the lineup or as an individual. And it's their last chance to prove they, they could earn a spot, you know, for big 12. So our guys are really engaged, uh, you know, in this event, they want to play well. They feel like it's a good opportunity to get in the lineup for, for big 12s. Uh, whereas last year, the writing was kind of on the wall for a lot of guys. So, uh, a, a lot of benefits, I think, to moving it to April. But again, we could not do this without Pete Dye, their ownership, their staff, their membership. They've really embraced us. They've embraced this event. They're trying to make it uh, a fun event, special event. So we're excited about that. Okay, if you have a question, please use the raised hand feature. We'll go first to Kevin Kinder. Hey, Coach, does it also help? playing a what appears to be a pretty difficult force of course the week before the big 12s uh you know i know you get around and play a lot of different courses but you know playing a pete die obviously that's a challenge does that help get your guys in that mindset of hey we're gonna have to grind it out at the big 12s yes yeah, certainly i mean pete die is very visually uh intimidating and then we set it up pretty difficult uh, maybe not every round but but certainly for two of the three rounds, it is very difficult. Uh, in fact, yesterday we played um, a qualifying round and, you know, it, it played very hard. So, and we're very familiar with it too. So yeah, it, it certainly helps. It lets you know, par is a great score. We feel like par is a really good score. Um, so kind of that U.S. Open mentality where, you know, even if you're a few over par, you're, you're uh, still in it. Um, you know, some tournaments are different. Some tournaments you got to shoot, you know, 15, 20 under as a team. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the case, uh, especially on Monday uh, for our event with the weather coming in. So, uh, yeah, it's, it certainly helps us understand that par is always a great score because we're about to go to Prairie Dunes. We're about to go to Big 12 Championship. It's going to be windy. It's going to be cold. Um, and so you got to, you know, do everything you can to shoot around par. Joe Bacado. Sean, what is the status of qualifying? How far along are you guys in the process? We uh, we just started qualifying. Normally, we we try to wrap it up several days before you know the tournament. But again, I I wanted to play as close as I could, or play qualifying as close as I could to our tournament, just because I felt like the golf course would be very similar. Whereas if we did qualifying in you know late March or early April you know, the golf course could be totally different by the time tournament got here. So we just started yesterday. We're not going to finish until probably the day before practice rounds, but that's the benefit of hosting at home. You, you can, you can qualify right up until really the first round if you want to. Um, and so it's still wide open. Um, you know, based on this season, we really haven't, you know, had a, a number one or two guy emerge. Everybody number one through number nine has a chance to, not only be in our lineup, but maybe be in the number one spot. Um, and it's just been one, one of those years where everybody's had their moments. Um, and so uh, that's the exciting thing right now. Like I, I literally have no idea who's, 
who will be in our top five and the guys don't either. And that's going to get them really focused at practice today uh, and, and through qualifying the next few days. Back to Kevin. You have a lot of veterans in your lineup, but you also have a freshman, uh, Westy, that has done really well this year, that has uh, played well in a lot of tournaments. What are some of the challenges a freshman has to go through in you know, getting to the top levels of collegiate golf? What have you seen from him that's allowed him to be successful this year? Yeah, when you look at uh, some of the best players we've had, um, one of them is their names back here, Mark Getz. Um, you know, his freshman year was not not very good. Sophomore year, not very good. And then then he figured it out, started to click. Same thing for Logan Perkins. Didn't do much his freshman year, sophomore year. So in college golf, I mean, there's so many challenges as a freshman. A lot of it has to do with off the course. You know, you're living in a dorm. You're away from home. Time management. You know, I'm uh, your coach, I'm demanding you be at workouts, practice on time. You're, you've got academic stuff. You're, you're trying to fit in socially. I mean, there's so many things. And, um, you know, for most of our guys, are, they're from far off. So when they come up here, the grass type, the golf course, everything's different. So you saw that with Westy. It, it, it freshman or the fall, he never made the lineup, really wasn't close. Uh, finally got in the lineup uh, in the spring in his first tournament. He finished 82nd out of 82 players. So he finished dead last in his first college tournament. That was at Arizona. We kept him in the lineup the very next tournament. He was our low man. He was almost top 25 at the Florida Gator. He was our, our low player at Puerto Rico. He was our low player at, at Hootie at Bulls Bay. So he, he proved it to himself that, that he belongs. But a lot of times you have to kind of fall on your face, you know, to figure out, okay, uh, I need to learn. I need to get better. This is not going to be easy. Um, and he embraced that hard work. And um, what I love about Wesley is a competitor. I mean, he played high-level uh, soccer all the way through, you know, he graduated high school. He loves to compete. He's a great team player. Um, he makes everybody else around him better. So I'm, I'm excited not only what he's done this, you know, this semester, but really what he's going to do over his career because he's just the kind of kid you want uh, on your roster. John Antonick. Sean, are you a little surprised that you don't have a clear cut number one right now? I mean, yes and no. Um, no, because we we had Mark, we had Logan for the past what two and a half, three years. They they've literally been our number one and two, and mm -hmm. everybody kind of knew that. Uh, so this was like the first year that we didn't have that. So I think a lot of guys were, you know, looking around like who, who's who's going to emerge as our as our leader, both, you know, on the course and off the course. Um, and so it just, it just hasn't happened yet. But again, if you would have told me Mark would have been our leader his sophomore year, I'd, it'd have been hard to believe. So, you know, somebody's going to emerge, it may happen this week and then they take off with it the rest of their career or it may happen next season. The good news is I, I think we do have the pieces in place. It's just, we've got to prove it to ourselves. Um, I mean, I really like this team, the results, uh, on the scoreboard, haven't been there this year, but they're closer than than it looks. Uh, but the work ethic, the character, the culture, uh, could not be more excited and and encouraged by that kind of that kind of stuff. Um, it's been the most fun uh, coaching a squad I've ever had, and this might be one of the worst seasons we've had as far as mm -hmm. results. But um, I really like this squad. Uh, excited about next year. But again, it, it may happen this week, may happen at Big 12s, but at some point it will happen. Is there a guy on your roster that you think could put up a low number uh, that, that's capable of putting up low numbers? Yeah, I mean, uh, everybody is. I mean, look at um, – obviously, I think what pops in, in the, into your mind first would be Jackson Davenport, who's been yeah. in the lineup a lot. He shot low records – or low, low scores. Uh, Max Green, who's now a sophomore, he's shot a lot of low scores. He's won a tournament in college. You know, he won last year as a freshman. But even, I mean, look at Ollie Menard, a guy that you probably might not think of. He got in the lineup. He shot 66 at Bulls Bay, one of the lowest rounds, uh, you know, for us that week. So everybody, top to bottom. I mean, Curtis Grant, you can go back in his career and look at it. So, so it's uh, consistency. Yeah, it's just we yeah. got to do it. We got to do it uh, all in the same day for the team, for it to count, um, you know, for the team. But I, I'm telling you, all these guys have the ability. It's just um, sometimes in golf, you, you just don't have it all in the same day. Yeah.
Let's go to Tanner Lambert. Hey, coach. So you, you say, you know, you don't have that that number one, but maybe that's because you have depth and you're able to shift guys in and out. Is that a positive thing, you think, and gets guys more experience with, you know, a little bit of a younger team, maybe? Yeah, uh, playing time this year has definitely been um, evenly distributed. We've had so many different lineups, um, and normally it's not that way. But like I said, this year we, we lost, you know, due to graduation um, after five years, Mark and Logan left. So um, everybody knew, hey, if my, there's an opportunity for me to get in there and play. And the way we structured qualifying this year, every single spot and every single tournament is up for grabs based on what you do in qualifying period. There's no coaches picks. There's nothing uh, just because I wanted to see who would step up, you know, and who, uh, who would get that playing time. And they know it's all on them. Um, and I think that's a great move that we made this year because, you know, a leader will eventually emerge. Um, but uh, yeah, all these guys are really good. The qualifying is so tight. I mean, we've played over probably 30 rounds this year from the fall to the, to the spring. And I'm telling you like a shot or two separates our number three guy to a number nine guy. I've never seen that in, in my coaching career. It's usually a huge gap discrepancy, but they're so close. Um, so I think that keeps everybody really engaged and motivated to uh, make the lineup. Back to Kevin. It's a, it's a little bit away from this weekend's tournament, but have a new athletic director in place. And obviously you've had some fits and starts with facilities, things like that. Have you been able to talk with Ren yet? Uh, I know he's putting together a new master facilities plan, you know, a new mid range and long range plan about your needs and, you know, what you hope for the program going forward. Yeah. Ren's been great. Uh, first of all, just a great, a great guy. Um, Really enjoyed hanging out with him, getting to know him, uh, kind of the the culture and, and vibe that he brings. Uh, very supportive. Um, and he's, he's been at a lot of good schools uh, as far as golf, you know, golf-wise. I mean, North Texas just built uh, an amazing facility uh, there on campus. So, yeah, we certainly talked. We made some uh, some visits together and stuff. And, um, yeah, I'm very, I'm very encouraged, uh, you know, Trying to share too much right now, but I, all I can tell you is I'm I, we're we're sitting really good right now. Um, I'm excited and looking forward to to next year. And we'll close with John. Yeah, I have one more. And I, I missed the top end of it, but just getting Oklahoma State to, to this golf course and um, having the feel that you have for this tournament coming up next Monday and Tuesday. Right, uh, thirteen teams. Uh, of course, we're one of those 13. Uh, we'll, we'll compete. Um, you know, it's a great field. I think obviously highlighted by Oklahoma State, an 11 time national champion. I mean, the PJ Tour players they produce every single year is unreal. Yeah. Um, so having them come here is, is definitely special. But, you know, uh, VCU's had a great year. Coastal Carolina is always good. Um, they, they, Dustin Johnson played there. Um, you know, Marshall, all those guys are very familiar with Pete Dye, a lot of West Virginia kids. So, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be tough. Uh, we got to play well, but yeah, having Oklahoma state, I think they're the first big 12 uh, team to come to Pete Dye. I mean, we've had PAC 12 teams, we've had big 10 teams, we have ACC, we've had SEC. Um, so to get them here, that's pretty special. And it, it kind of happened last minute, you know, they're, they, they've had a lot of rainouts, a lot of cancellations. So they, they ended up with a lot of extra days of competition and their coach called me and was like, look, I know it's kind of last minute, but we're just trying to compete before big 12s. Like we need, we need something. And we've heard great things about Pete Dye. Um, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity uh, for our guys to, to play with and compete against, you know, one of the best programs in college golf, they set the standard, you know, for college golf for decades. So why not? You know, why not play against the best? Uh, we're going to see them at Big 12s anyhow, so might as well uh, get them up here to West Virginia. And, um, you know, hopefully something special can happen and we can play well at home. But if not, either way, we're going to learn from competing against them. And um, it's uh, it's made our event even even more special having them come. Well, and what, real quick, um, the, the gallery, what, what do you anticipate in terms of a crowd? And you know, where are some of the, the best holes to, to watch action, to get a lot of the action in Pete Dye? Yeah, a lot. Of, well, I mean, every team brings a lot of moms, dads, and mm -hmm. grandmas, grandpas, and you know, uh, brothers, sisters. So it's uh, they'll they'll travel. Um, 
you know, visiting teams will travel. We'll have our fans. A lot of our families will be there as well. Um, it's, uh, it's free admission. Um, you can just walk, walk the golf course, uh, you know, for free. Um, best vantage point, honestly, uh, obviously you want to see everybody tee off on, on number one. Yeah. Um, and then I would say the back nine is, um, is very exciting. Uh, you can sit there on 15 behind 15 green and kind of see 15 and 16 okay. cut over, watch 17, 18. So that's, that's definitely a good spot. Or you can just sit on the back patio at the clubhouse and see basically seven of the nine holes on the back nine. Honestly, yeah. um, I don't know if we'll be wearing gold shirts or not yet, but that we're easy to spot if when we're wearing gold. Um, but, uh, just get out there, walk the course. Uh, it is, you know, the weather is great until we host the tournament and then it's going <laughs> to, obviously it's going to drop down into like the fifties, uh, crazy be windy, but that's just the curse of college golf. So you, you want bad weather scheduled tournament. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Perfect today. Have it today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For qualifying it'd be 80 and sunny and then the tournament gets here it'd be like in the fifties and windy. Yeah. yeah I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Coach, I think that's going to wrap it up. I uh, appreciate everyone calling in. Uh, Coach, thanks for your time, and uh, good luck next week. Thank you.